Hi. This isn't your narrator. This is Kristen. Uh, If you don't remember me from the ends of every episode before this one, then hello. I'm Kristen Zaza. This is my podcast. If you haven't listened before, you don't know that usually someone else is talking right now. In a way. Listen, I'm sorry. I tried to get her to come out for this episode. No matter how many times I knocked and knocked, she wouldn't come to the door. She couldn't come out for this episode. Your narrator. She couldn't bring herself to do it. I understand. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that isn't a metaphor. Sure, there's no door. You know this. I'm not going to pretend you don't. But I'm not going to tell you that she doesn't exist either. This is real. If you're listening, if you have been really listening, you know that it's real. She just can't come to the phone tonight. That's all I'm allowed to say. She wouldn't come out, and I wasn't sure whether or not I should proceed. Do I send out an episode? Would you want to listen to me? Would it ruin all that I, we, created? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. And if you think that, well... Hi. Welcome anyway. Sorry. She'll be back. So you have to listen to me and my story this week. That's okay. It's a good one. I promise. I mean, I think. We're gonna get through this together. So just stay with me. And I won't lead you astray. You're my friend too, you know. Some weeks she is this gorgeous thing. This dark, mysterious thing that I envy and admire and desperately want to be. Other weeks she is this small, frail thing. This thing with empty black eyes that give nothing and demand everything and refuse it all once you've given it. And yet, why should I sit here and give my time, my voice, to her? She who gives me back so little. Here's my story. You can take it or leave it. Thanks for listening. I can't say it enough. Thanks for listening. I sat down to write a story. Once. It doesn't matter when. I sat down to write something, anything really. I sat with my piano and my pen and my wine and my microphone and... And nothing would come out. It's so easy, so terribly easy to fall in love with words and then just as quickly to fall out of love with those same words. And I brushed it off. And I went on with my life. I worked. 
not on something I love, but worked. Walked to a place and stayed there for eight and a half hours and walked home and numbed my brain for a while after it. And I did this again and again and again. Because sometimes that's what life has to be. Working and walking and sleeping and eating, and that's all. And you don't stop or sit, because if you did, you'd realize how badly your feet hurt and how tired you were, and you wouldn't be able to get up and do it again. These are not real problems. These are small, petty. But what I mean to say is, I don't stop. It's really not a bad thing, despite the fact that I'm making it sound like it is. The really difficult thing is the loneliness that comes with this. Months can go by before you realize you've been working so much and stopping so little that you can't remember the last time you saw a friend. You start to wonder if you even have friends anymore, really. But you keep going, as you must. It's really not a bad thing. One night, I was walking home, and the sun was setting lazily in the direction in which I was walking. And for a moment, my brain stopped cursing to itself and muttering infantile complaints and whining and griping. And suddenly, surprising me as if out of nowhere, I saw the sunset for what it was. Just a sunset on a hill. Huh. I watched it for a little while, and I didn't think about the future or the past, the things I had to do or the things I wanted to do. I was just caught in the dying of the light and the acceptance of that dying all around me, in everything and everyone. There it goes. And eventually, as I turned my head to the road once more to continue on my journey, I thought I saw, somehow, the silhouette of a woman. I couldn't tell you much about her from that first time, except that she seemed a little bit like me. Just a little, for she seemed to be mostly darkness and cold. Just standing some ways ahead of me. Clearly staring directly at me. And as she did, I felt a shudder. A genuine shiver from a stunning chill that made its way down my back. And the strangest part is... I can't remember how she left my sight. I can't remember if she disappeared, or if she simply walked away. I can't remember which direction she went. But the next thing I knew, she was gone. That was all. But that chill stayed with me. It crept onto my dinner plate that night. It slithered into my bed, and it found footing in nightmare after nightmare, story after story. And they centered around a woman like me, and not like me. Someone who watched, and waited, and smiled with pointed teeth, hungry as a shark. She visited more and more often, you know and I would find myself in more and more moments of stillness, stillness of time and space, and I would find myself stopping for them. And remember, when your feet hurt, stopping can be dangerous. But I started to do it anyway. And each time, that chill, and each time, I fancied I saw her shadowed figure, watching, waiting, 
smiling. What did she want? Why were her visits coming more and more frequently? And why couldn't I forget her in everything else I did? Everywhere else I went. And more than that, things began to, to change. People, more and more frequently, began to forget my face. And yet strangers more often would remember it. I know you, don't I? They would say all the time, calling me by a different name. Coincidences. Small things. Seeing an old friend I haven't seen in years. Then an hour later seeing that same person in an entirely different, random place. Sitting on a bus and seeing my initials carved into the seat beside me. These things kept happening. And perhaps it meant nothing. Likely it meant nothing. Or possibly the world was slowing down just a little bit for these brief windows to stop and say to me, I'm watching. I'm listening. I'm here. And that voice that echoed back was so very similar to my own. So close. But it was someone else. On my walks home, on my sunset walks, the figure would start to draw closer and closer each night I walked. Sometimes, as it had been the first time, I'd notice her ahead of me in the distance. Sometimes I'd turn my head and she'd be behind me. Sometimes it would take me a long time to notice, but, but it would occur to me that she was walking alongside me, my constant, silent companion, and I had no idea what she wanted or what she was doing, walking around with some grumbling, dissatisfied creature like me. But she was there. I didn't mind so much anymore. At first it was frightening, of course, but I didn't mind, after a while, having her walk with me. As long as I didn't stare too long at her black eyes, her teeth, her clawed hands, her translucent skin. As long as I didn't let that cold sink in too deeply into my bones. As long as I kept the ever-present threat of her in the back of my mind. Whatever she was. She was a regular part of my sunset walks, and no, I didn't mind. What I did mind was going home one evening, having a small little dinner, watching some television, ignoring the half-finished documents on my computer, the half-scrawled lyrics at the piano, crawling into bed muttering about not having enough time, despite the fact that I had just wasted three hours. Closing my eyes. Waking up in the middle of the night, to a dark room. To a cat on the bed staring at the hallway, his back arched and his teeth bared silently. To a figure of a woman standing in the hallway watching me. She walked away. I stood, shaking to follow, but when I turned the corner, she was gone. It was a dream, I told myself in the morning. I told it to myself again when, the next night, I awoke to her standing in the door of my bedroom. Closer. And the next night, when she was standing right beside me, watching me. And I couldn't move. I lay there, unable to lift my head or move my arms. Her lips, swollen from those rows of fangs in her mouth, curled into a dark and terrible smile. 
and I tried to scream, but the sound caught itself in my throat and strangled me a little. And she just watched me for a long time. Until, finally, she just reached over with a pale hand with abnormally, horrifyingly long fingers and black, sharp nails, and she placed her hand on my forehead. And in that moment, the cold of her hand spread across my entire body. Any light in the room was sucked away, and the only thing I could see was her face, stark and strange in the darkness and I could feel my heart thumping, thumping away in my chest faster and faster, as if warning me that I must do something. I must stop this. I must escape. But I couldn't. I couldn't move. And she leaned over, so close that I could hear her slow and calculated breaths. And she whispered, If I were a book, you, my friend, would write me. I don't remember anything after that. I remember waking up in my home. The sun shone as it always does, but it felt different this morning. The sun in the sky was a surprise. That I had survived the night to see it was remarkable, and forget the past evening or the future day ahead of me. In that simple, quiet moment, the sunrise was lovely, and I knew what I had to do. I didn't even call in sick to work that day. In fact, work went away completely. Didn't matter. My walks to and from work were no longer needed. I practically crawled out of bed over to my computer, still half asleep. And I haven't really stopped typing. I don't know how long it's been. I don't know if this is bad. Perhaps this is really, really bad, but... I have one friend, and she urges me to write. Keep on writing. Please don't stop. And I don't. Because I couldn't bear to break her heart. And I want her to keep visiting me. Oh very much. You have many questions, I'm sure. So do I. But the best I can say is, if I were a book, she would be the main character in my story. That's it. Sorry. I have to keep going. Thank you for listening. write a few things. Thanks for listening to episode 27 of On a Dark Cold Night. As I said, this is Kristen Zaza. It's been a lot of me this week, and I hope that's okay. If you want to support the show, there are a few options. First, you can donate on Coffee or on Patreon. Every little bit helps. You can check me out at ko-fi.com slash darkcoldnight, 
or patreon.com slash darkcoldnight. I would be so grateful, and I would be sure to give you an on-air shout-out as thanks for your help. Second, you can rate and review the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Podknife, or anywhere else you like. Or you can send me your thoughts on Twitter at a dark cold night, Instagram at dark cold night podcast, or on my Facebook page, or you can send your thoughts to dark cold night podcast at gmail.com. You may hear your review or message or questions read out here. And the third way you can help is to listen to this show on the Radio Public app, where every listen I get through there counts towards a paid listen for me. So it's free for you and helps me earn money for my work. It's a win win here, folks. Thanks so much for listening and staying with me through this tonight. I wonder what this would seem like if this was your first episode. But I suppose that's not for me to worry about. Thank you. Good night.